I thought we should start with the Zipcar story. How did you come up with this idea? How did, how did, all, this, how did all this happen? Zipcar is today the largest car sharing company in the world. And this was back in the fall of 99 that we were founded. My, what's interesting to reflect on is this was an idea that came from someplace else. This was an idea that was being executed in Europe since about the mid 80s. And my co-founder is German. She was sitting in a cafe. She looked across the street and saw a shared car. And she came back to Cambridge and said, what do you think of this? So she was in, in what city? Berlin. She, she was in Berlin. In Berlin, sitting in a cafe. And she asked me, because I had a business background, and I'm a very honest person, but I've told the story now so many times that it feels apocryphal, but I think it's true, that really a light bulb went on over my head and I said, oh my God, this is what the internet is made for, sharing very specific resources easily among lots of people. This is what wireless is made for, getting that reservation from a server directly to the car. Remember, this is the fall of 99, and this is what I personally want because I had three children and a husband, and I lived in a dense metro area with one car. My husband would take that car, and there was and no way in hell. And sometimes you need to use a car, right? Sometimes and I needed a car sometimes. And, you know, I didn't want to park it, maintain it, snow shovel it, any of that, but I needed a car sometimes. And so it really did snap together. I thought, this is precisely what I want. When you were rolling out Zipcar, how did you think about which markets would be the most receptive and which ones would be problematic? Um, what's amusing about that question is I've also been asked, you know, why did you start in Boston? And I started in Boston because I lived here, right? <laughs> there was no fancy market analysis that went into that. But as we rolled out and even within the city... Although there was something inherent in it, right? Because you thought of Zipcar because you lived there and because you knew true. it would be a good match for, where, for your life, right? It's true. And so I did... I Absolutely correct in that I think I was the right person to hear that story at the right time because I was a user and I lived that environment. So if we think about even expanding within Boston and to the next cities, what we learned is that Zipcar works in places where people don't need a car to get to work, and it works best where the price of parking is very high per month. Now, one side of Zipcar is, of course, you know, cutting-edge technology and totally novel. In the yeah. other sense, it's playing into something that is as old as the oldest cities, right? I mean, the sharing economy is yeah. not new to urban spaces, right? I mean, what is an urban restaurant other than a shared kitchen, a shared I'm dining? I'm laughing what because is, you, know, you have you were saying exactly what I tell people all the time because they keep saying to me, oh, no, sharing those cultural things. You do it in your country. You do it in your city. But in our country, in our city, sharing. And I say, you're crazy. You've been sharing since time immemorial. Exactly. Yeah. I'm completely in agreement with but, you. But something, so I, I thought about, you know, Zipcar when I was a kid in New York in the 1970s. And, you know, it, it, could you have had it? And one reason why you couldn't have had it is the technological mm -hmm. issues in terms of doing it. But the other issue is is the issue of safety and would the car be okay when you got it? So I have this, I've long had this sort of fantasy of going to pick up a zip car in Times Square in 1977 and like finding a dead body in the trunk. And that would make the whole experience fairly, fairly negative. Now, of course, with the technology, you now know who had the car beforehand. It would all be fairly yep. easy. But, but in some sense, I, I tend to think of it as the technology has enabled us to share more stuff. So right? uh, completely. So I, I wrote this book, Piers Inc., and when I was writing the book, I had to come up with what were the specific things that were enabling this kind of sharing, and I would say precise that technology has made the transaction of sharing of dealing with small individual parts trivial. So finding those individual things, paying for those individual things, getting phys access, like Zipcar, the car, just really fast, and importantly, this ability to move from trusting friends and trusting relatives to trusting the next circle out of friends of friends and strangers. And that is enabled by technology totally new today with the ability to do ratings and commentaries. And that, and that is something that has transformed even since we started Zipcar. And I think that's one of the things that has made the sharing economy blossom. People talk about the gig economy and the platform economy and the sharing economy and the on-demand economy. And for me, all of those names work. But this book that I wrote was to call out the fact that when we talk about those, we're actually talking about this brand new collaboration, this partnership between a large entity that I'm calling the Inc. that is doing all the things that big companies do well. So the gig economy is forgetting that it's only enabled by the platforms. And the platform economy is nothing, zero, if it didn't have this myriad of diversity around it. So it's this brand new collaboration that, for me, is what is exciting and thrilling about the future and enables us to get the best of these both worlds. And if I think about what I love about this particular future vision of the city is it's really celebrating 
celebrating and getting value out of people's individual uniqueness. And so it's, it's this delightful, amazing thing. I feel like we each have our own side to play, and that is enabled by the Internet that now makes this possible.